I think one thing that gets really nerve-wracking for fiber artists is when we have to travel with our whips. If you look up how do I fly with my knitting project or crochet project, you're going to be hit with a slew of Reddit posts where people share horror stories. I saw some things on there that really freaked me out. I've seen people write about sweaters that they spent months working on that then got ripped off the needles at TSA. People will tell you that no matter what you do, your stuff is going to get taken. Don't do it. It's not worth it. But that's not practical. As makers, part of our vacation is going to be having time to work on the projects that we have lined up. I know one thing that I love about vacations is that I know that whatever project I bring with me on that vacation, whenever I finish it, I'm always going to have it as a memento of that trip that I took. So it is important to figure out a routine that you can do when you travel that's going to make it so that you can get your project safely through TSA. So a quick disclaimer, I do not work for TSA. I never have worked for TSA. I don't know anyone who does, and these are not TSA regulation tips. You can refer to their website for hard and fast rules. These are just things that I do that set me up for success when I go through security at the airport with my projects. Personally, I've developed a way of packing my projects that has gotten me through security at the airport every time without issue. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I pack both my knitting projects and my crochet projects for flights. Hobbs, what do you have to say? Again, I can't stress enough, please take this advice with a grain of salt. This is just what's worked for me. A quick anecdote, a friend of mine was telling me that she and her friends went on a trip, I believe it was to Portugal, but they got knitting projects for that trip. She had a scarf that she had been knitting on her needles and they took her needles away but let her keep the scarf. So my understanding is that even if they ask you to get rid of your equipment, you're still going to be able to keep your project. What I've seen online is that people are just wanting to make sure that their project itself isn't going to be taken because you can always replace needles and things. So my understanding at least is that they're not going to just senselessly take your project. They're going to let you keep it. You just have to get rid of the thing that it's on. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I'm going to explain why that's kind of a manageable horror in this video, but just wanted to say that a few things that I like to make sure I have with me when I'm packing a project for a trip. I bring the needles and or hook that I will be needing for that project, the yarn I'm going to need for that project, but no more than I predict I will need, floss for cutting yarn, either scrap yarn or a ball of twine. I always bring a yarn needle for the scrap yarn, a bag that is both big enough to hold the projects that I'm bringing and easy enough for any TSA agent to sift through and clearly see the contents within. And then if I'm checking a bag, I will bring my preferred hook and or knitting needles in that bag. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. To demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to be using the current whips that I have. So I'm going to talk first about crochet projects specifically. This is one of my current crochet whips. This project is the Chroma Hood by Cosmodi. Cosmodi. So this project is the perfect project for traveling. It's a very repetitive pattern. It's just a repeated moss stitch and then ribbing elements. For this project, when I'm in my home, I'm using a Clover Amour hook. Now, I love these crochet hooks. They're ergonomic, so they don't hurt my hand as much, especially when I'm using a smaller size like this. And they're a bit pricier than other crochet hooks. I don't know where my more basic and expensive 4mm hook is, so this is a 3.5, but you get the idea. If I was flying with this project, I would not bring this hook on the plane with me, at least not in my carry-on bag, because believe it or not, some TSA agents will take a crochet hook. Something to keep in mind is that some airlines do have specific rules about crafting tools that can be brought on their planes. These rules differ. And also, when you're going through security, you're dealing with a TSA agent. All of my research indicates that despite what the different airlines' rules are for what you can bring on a plane in terms of crafting supplies, ultimately the decision about what's going to be allowed through security is up to the individual TSA officer that's looking at what's trying to go through security. Now, if they're going to take a crochet hook, I'm not going to argue. I want everyone involved in the airport security experience to just take a deep breath and have a good experience. So I wouldn't fight them on this, but what I can do as a smart cookie is I cannot take this nice, more expensive crochet hook with me, but rather I could take this more inexpensive, less preferred crochet hook that I have. If you don't have multiple versions of different crochet hook sizes in your collection, I do suggest just going to Michael's or some similar craft store 
and just getting a set of the Susan Bates metal hooks just so that you always have a backup for travel. If this hook got taken, I'd be fine with that. These are very affordable and that would be way less heartbreaking for me than if this nicer hook was taken. I feel like that's pretty straightforward. I'm about to get into knitting as well. The nice thing about traveling with crochet is that you can just hold your work on a stitch marker. For example, with this project, if they took my crochet hook, there'd be no damage to this project. I have it on a stitch marker here. The only bad thing that would happen is I'd be down a crochet hook. But because I brought one that was less expensive, wherever I'm going, I could either pick up another one or I would never be able to do this, but you could just be like, okay, well, I guess I'm not crocheting on this trip. Or we'll get to this later. If you're checking a bag, you can always keep another backup crochet hook in that bag. Now on to packing for knitting projects. This is a bit more high stakes because if they take your knitting needles, then that means that your project's gonna be exposed and vulnerable. If they take your knitting needles and you have nothing else to put your project on, you risk your project being completely frogged, but not if you come prepared. First of all, I just want to say I have never, like I said, had knitting needles or crochet hooks taken from me at TSA. And I do think it's because I've been very nervous about that happening. So I'm going to get to in a second things that you can do were they to take your knitting needles, like what happened to my friend. But also, I just want to give you guys a suggestion because, because there's a type of needle, and this is not sponsored, that I have flown with every time out of paranoia that they would take sharp knitting needles. And I have never had an issue. I've never even had an officer ask me about what I was taking. Okay, so you're flying with your knitting. This is not a time to have your work on your super expensive interchangeable needle set, okay? I know it's really fun to work with. I know it makes it easy. Bring multiple pairs of needles. Do not risk having your really expensive set. I know my interchangeable needle set was an investment. If these got taken from me, that would be bad. Like, that would be, like, down the drain. I mean, guys, I know we're knitters and we know how harmless all this stuff is. But if you don't know what you're looking at, this, like, it looks sketchy. It looks like a knife belt or something. So it's just not the time to bring those. I also, I can't actually find the knitting project that I brought on my most recent trip. But it was just a standard stockinette raglan, which I think is probably the perfect travel knitting project. So I'm going to use this one as an example. I would never like travel with this just because there's so many bobbins hanging off of it. But I will be using it as an example. Also, like I'm just currently obsessed with this project. So I have this project currently on some nice wooden knitting needles. If I were traveling with this, I would not bring these. This is not personally what I do. In a second, I'm going to show you the needles that I swear by. They do make cheap plastic knitting needles. I have a feeling that these are just as risky as the wooden ones, though I guess plastic is pretty harmless. They are still pretty sharp, but these are relatively inexpensive. So if these got taken, it wouldn't be as bad of a hit financially. I actually swear by flying with these needles though. These are the prim ergonomic knitting needles. Personally, I love knitting on these anyways. I just find that knitting is like super smooth on these. And here's why. I don't know what's ergonomic about these. I don't know how you make knitting needles ergonomic, but I do love Prim's ergonomic crochet hooks, so I trust them. The reason that these are great to fly with though is because they have rounded tips. So even if you had a TSA agent who felt the need to look closely at your knitting project, what they would find is a set of knitting needles with a rounded tip. So clearly they wouldn't be able to cause any harm because the big concern with knitting needles I'm pretty sure is that it's like a weapon or something. I have never had a problem flying with these and I think it is because even if they were to look they're round at the end. So if they take your project off the knitting needles first of all I'm so sorry. Second of all you need to have something to put that project on. You can buy cord. I forget what it's called. I'll insert it. Um, they make cord that you can buy. I mean, people use it to like try on their projects and like to just hold their projects as they go if they want it off the needles for whatever reason. I don't own any of this cord simply because I've not found a need for it yet. I actually just always use scrap yarn when I need to do this. So that's what I fly with personally. I also always seem to have twine on me from various just like DIY projects so that's also an option of something that you could bring. You just need something that you can thread through the stitches that are now vulnerable from not having a knitting needle to hang on to. This is just an acrylic yarn that I've had in my stash forever, don't really know what to do with, but I always bring it. And then I'll take my yarn needle that was in our packing list from earlier and I would I suppose just take a second, you know they always have like little benches after security, I would just thread 
this extra yarn through my knitting project. And then like with crochet hooks, I would just call it a loss for the flight and then either get extra knitting needles wherever I'm going or if I check a bag, I'd get them from there. So that's basically how I handle packing for knitting and crochet. Even though with knitting, I always travel with these knitting needles. Even if my project is on nicer knitting needles, before I fly, I will always transfer it to these. And like I said, I've never had a problem, but even so, I will still bring all that stuff that I just mentioned. So I'll bring the scrap yarn or twine, and I'll bring the yarn needle, and then hopefully I will have been able to bring extra knitting needles as well. So the other thing I want to mention is a hack that you may have seen before, but this is traveling with floss rather than snips when you're traveling with your projects. This is a super helpful hack, especially with flying, because you can actually just put this in your personal item wherever you're putting your toiletries because, you know, you need to floss. Or you can have this in with your knitting stuff. Whatever floats your boat, I normally just put this on an easily accessible outer pocket of my backpack that I'm flying with. But what's great about traveling with floss is that you can actually cut your yarn with the metal tab that is in the floss container. And it works just the same as having snips. A note on that, I will also say, again, this is like how subjective everything is. My mom's a big needle pointer and with needle point you need snips all the time. And she has never had a problem. She just brings her smaller snips rather than her big scary ones. I just feel like it would be my luck that all my stuff would get taken. So I always bring my floss. Okay, and then one last thing I wanna talk about is the bag that you put your stuff in. So just to make everyone's lives easier, just in the event that your project does raise alarms at security, just keep everything in one condensed place. A project bag that you can put inside your personal item or carry on, that's easily removed and just, that's easily removed and has all of your knitting and crochet stuff in one place that the officer can clearly look at. I suggest this for multiple reasons. One, organizationally, this is so much easier. But two, I would imagine that if a TSA officer was looking at a scanner and they saw your knitting needles or hook or whatever it is that made them pull your project, once they saw a bag full of yarn and like knitting needles and like a half finished sweater, I'm sure that they would be like, oh, she's not who we're worried about, you know what I mean? I think if you have all your stuff in one place, it's just gonna make the potential process of them digging through your stuff so much easier. So recently when I flew to Austin, I took everything in this tote bag. This was a pretty big bag, but I had packed super light for this trip, so that was no problem. And it was easy enough, if need be, for the TSA agent to pull this bag out of my backpack and then look through it. In the past, if my project is small enough, I'll also put it in a clear bag. So I have some like this. I work as a makeup artist, so I have a lot of random clear little pouches and things for my makeup kit. But sometimes I will put projects in this if they're small enough. Ziploc bags also work great. I also have bags like this that though they're not clear, they're still see-through because they're mesh. Stuff like this is always great. It's just like the liquids thing where it's like if they can just see what you have in there, then it makes everything a lot easier. But yeah, so a project bag helps. And then the last thing I'll say, and I touched on this when I was talking about crochet hooks and knitting needles, is all this being said, if you are checking a bag, I would suggest bringing your nicer stuff in that bag. So, so a lot of my advice was that you just put your stuff on crummier supplies. So you bring a crummier crochet hook and you bring your lower quality knitting needles, things like that. The checked bag is your opportunity to make sure that while you travel, you're knitting or crocheting with the tools that you really prefer. So I've done that before where I've checked bags and then I've put my nicer wooden knitting needles in there or I've put my ergonomic crochet hooks in there but then I'll fly with my lower quality plastic or metal crochet hooks or whatever the case may be. So that's my last little tip there. I'm gonna insert some clips here. I'm gonna show you guys what a fully packed crochet project bag would look like for me on a normal flight. And then I'm gonna show you guys what a normal knitting project bag would look like for me on a flight. That is so hard to say. What a knitting project bag would look like for me on a flight. I do like to just over prepare it's important to remember these TSA agents, they're just trying to do their jobs. And yes, though our projects are not the dangers that they may suspect they are, <laughs> they're just trying to keep everyone safe. And I would personally rather they be cautious than not. <laughs> so a lot of these tips are just to make it easier on everyone. And again, be patient. You may be speaking with a TSA agent who has no context for crochet or knitting or what it looks like. Though to you, it's obvious that your knitting needles and your sweater project are not harmful. To this person, they may just simply not understand. So 
be kind, prepare well. Be prepared that there is a slight possibility that your knitting needles or your crochet hook or any other notions might be taken. And don't be anxious about your project being frogged. I, I think that um, when I was first looking into this, a lot of what I was seeing online was like, I'm so scared that they're going to frog my granny square cardigan in front of my eyes. And I don't think that anyone's going to do that. The risk is more so that you're going to lose the tools that you're making your project with. So the best thing you can do is just bring things that you're not sad about parting with. Maybe this is a time to get one last use out of those knitting needles that you've had since you taught yourself how to knit in high school. Or maybe you could just look at it as an excuse to visit a craft store in whatever town you're visiting and pick up some new notions from there. That's at least what I would do. <laughs> this was by no means a fully in-depth video, but I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of how I pack for trips because I was thinking about it as I was packing for this trip. Like, when I first started traveling with my knit and crochet, I was just so nervous about this because I'm just so nervous about being even perceived as a rule breaker that I wanted to pack correctly. And I wish I had found a video like this that just reassured me that nothing bad was going to happen, but also told me what I needed to do in order to protect my project the best. So that's about all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, if you guys aren't already, please make sure to subscribe. I'm dropping new videos here somewhat weekly, kind of just whenever I can. But if you want to keep up with my projects on a more regular basis, I post on my Instagram at underscore the drop stitch daily. So be sure to check me out over there. And until next time, stretch your wrists, drink some water, and please purl responsibly. Catch you in the next one, guys. Bye. Thank you.